Any last minute advice to the parents, the listeners, the majority are parents that listen, any advice to them about how to begin this process of handling their worries and so forth? Yeah. So I think the most, the most important thing is that you really, avoidance begets avoidance. And even though, so, so the reason avoidance is so popular, so to speak, is that it works like a charm. So if you are worried about something or if your child is worried about something and you avoid it, right? Boy, things get better pretty quickly. But the more you avoid, particularly with school, we're seeing a lot of increase in school refusal and school yes, avoidance. A lot. And the more that you put those accommodations in place, the more that you support a child not engaging in their world, the worse the problem is going to get. So it feels counterintuitive. It's super hard. You're going to drop your kid off at school. It's okay if you cry all the way home. That's okay. But we really want to make sure that we are focusing on taking action that steps kids into connection rather than supporting anxieties, really desire to, to shut your kid down. And that's definitely, what I, I couldn't have said it any better. And it's really work with your treatment professional, find a good treatment professional mm -hmm. that can help you navigate this because they don't know, like you don't know. I know as a parent, you don't know, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so work with somebody that understands and gets it and can be compassionate to you with your own fears and worries. And it is, it's a roadmap, but learning the skills, it's beautiful when you see that evolution and that metamorphosis, frankly. That's right. And don't be afraid to ask if you're looking for a therapist to ask right. what their training is, what their expertise is, because I'm sure you've had this experience. Therapists can do it wrong. Yes. And, and you got to go to somebody who knows what they're doing rather than just going to somebody who's just nice. Right. True. Right? And also, if it doesn't feel right, it's not right. Right. Go with your gut. Like in your gut, you know, if somebody's telling you something and you're like, whoa, that, that doesn't feel right. It's not like you're dealing with their anxiety. That's not feeling it. It's like, that just doesn't feel right. It's not right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It shouldn't feel that hard. Your therapist should be validating you and helping you navigate. Not, not, it should feel right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it, they should also be telling you what to do. Yes. Right. For so, sure. so, and if you go to somebody, I've, people say this all the time. Well, we've gone for 10 sessions and we know that we're just building rapport. Yeah. No, no. Build, you know what builds rapport? Telling parents what to do. That builds rapport. Absolutely. And I tell them all the time. I said, look, I'm going to, my families will tell me, tell me all the time. You say it the way it is, doctor. That's right. And I do. And I say it in a way that's productive. That's right. And they love that. They want right. to be told what to do and they right. want to be able to have the skills and they thank you for it. That's right. That's right. Right? Yep. Yeah.